Hello everyone, I'm Maria Hall Brown. Here's what's happening in LA this week. Los Angeles World Airport recently celebrated the grand opening of their newest facility. In fact, the $216 million building complex is designed to accommodate critical airport police functions and equipment. Check out the new digs. We're so very excited to be able to open this fantastic new police uh, facility where finally we're going to be able to consolidate and bring all of our airport police department together in one building. Everybody here in one facility, you know, uh, helps us coordinate better. Our, facility, our federal partners can come over and have uh, really uh, collaborative meetings with all the team all at once rather than uh, doing the Zooms that we've done over the last two years. Uh, and it was very challenging getting around the airport, even for us, uh, can be a challenge because of the traffic issues. And so face-to-face -face meetings and briefings together are very, very important. There is a better opportunity for collaboration for the police and a better communication, better facilities. I mean, they'll be here and they'll be comfortable uh, doing their jobs rather than being in tight spaces. And they don't have to leave the premises. There's an exercise room. There's a beautiful lunch facility, lunch room, where people will feel comfortable so they can eat and de-stress a bit in between, you know, doing their job. Our range is state of the art. It's large enough to drive vehicles in. It's fully electronic. That's important for us, as well as the way our uh, vehicles are parked in terms of the, our special service vehicles, our emergency services, which is our SWAT team. They have their own bay. They're separated from the bomb team, which has their own their own specific bay. The nice thing about this facility is that it's right to the north of the airport, right in the community here. So the presence of the police department in the community here on the, on the north side in the Westchester area is not only going to help us to make the airport safer, but it's also going to allow quicker access to all the different areas for our airport campus. You know, as we're moving our airport farther to the east with the People Mover and the Conrack and the, uh, in, in a, um, the economy parking lot, we're going to have a need for our uh, airport police to be able to deploy all over very quickly and this allows them to do that. We're happy to be here in the community and be able to be, you know, stationed so close. Obviously, we're right by the airport, but we're also in the community and, and I think the community and the residents really appreciate our presence. When we think about carbon emissions, most of us tend to picture large factories and industrial parks. Actually, building structures are the largest source of carbon emissions in LA. Mayor Eric Garcetti, together with Council Members Paul Krikorian, Nithya Raman, and Paul Koretz, partnered with community organizations to move forward the city's building decarbonization policy. Here's that story. Building decarbonization is a complex term, but at its core, it means reducing building emissions to protect ourselves and our communities from the harmful impacts of this climate catastrophe. We know that buildings are the largest source of emissions in our city, but we're also making sure we don't just do environmental work, that we do equity work, so that nobody loses their homes, nobody loses their jobs, nobody compounds the racism that we see structurally in our city. So we want to make sure that as we decarbonize buildings, we are not adding to the rent burdens, that we are not adding to the homeless burden, that we are not adding to the burdens that our communities have already faced. And we know that if we don't center on justice, things will not work. So today, Los Angeles continues to step up its game. Today, we launch an initiative intended to eradicate climate pollution caused by our building stock and to do it through community engagement. What we see in the policy that's being introduced today is what we must all realize is that the future of this planet depends on all of us linking arms, grabbing an oar, and working on policy that works for everyone for the sake of our climate, for the sake of our local environment, and for the sake of every neighborhood in Los Angeles. What we have to think about as we're making investments right now is really to think about this in the context of what are the costs going to be of inaction? What are the costs going to be of the physical harm that people face from climate change and from the ravages that it's already having on our city? We've all seen California's record-breaking wildfires get more devastatingly record-breaking each year. Meanwhile, snow is missing in action in Colorado, and Hawaii has a blizzard warning. Climate change is now a fixture in our daily lives. As long as we continue to emit greenhouse gases, it will continue to get hotter and more chaotic. 
It's time to take action. It's time to invest in our people. It's time to build a strong economy and it's time to save this planet. Council member Kevin DeLeon attended the ribbon cutting for the historic Cecil Hotel to celebrate its transformation to affordable housing. The site will provide residences to 600 low-income individuals through single room units and efficiency studios. Channel 35 was there to take the tour. It's a grand opening of the world famous Cecil Hotel here on Main Street and it is wonderful news for 600 unhoused individuals living in Skid Row today. This is a game changer. 600 units available immediately for our unhoused community. It's a game changer. We now we need to get people in here and we need to get them the wraparound support services, but we're celebrating a project that cost under 125,000, took less than a year to set up. This is an example of what can work. COVID presented a unique opportunity. Homelessness has certainly been a, a huge issue in uh, dense urban areas like Los Angeles for a long time. COVID certainly exacerbated that. And we saw an opportunity after the onset of COVID to really make a difference here in the community, but also bring something that financially made sense. One, zero. Yay. Yay. We're going to move very quickly and we're going to find 600 individuals and we're going to put them, you know, in these rooms here in Cecil Hotel. It's stormy outside, but with the dark clouds, the rainy storm at this moment, we see a beacon of hope and a ray of sunshine for a lot of folks who are suffering right now living on the street. Since 1989, the nonprofit Northeast Trees has been pursuing a mission of fostering urban forestry and building low impact development. In a recent event, the organization teamed up with council member Gil Cedillo for a community giveaway, where over 100 Angelinos walked away with a free tree. Take a look. We're doing a tree celebration today at Sycamore Grove Park. It's coordinated by residents of Highland Park, the Neighborhood Council, Council District 1, City Plants Program, and the nonprofit that I belong to is Northeast Trees. And we're here to give trees out today so people can plant trees in their own yard. We're giving over 100 trees away. Uh, and we're learning about the process of, of creating good landscaping that protects the environment, that blends with the environment, provides canopy uh, for the region. All our projects, uh, we insist that they have the optimum of landscaping so that uh, people in the, in the city and people in the district can appreciate the outdoors. This is a non-fruiting olive tree, which I've always wanted, so <laughs> it's perfect. Um, and that's a pomegranate tree that we got today, and it was super easy. And we heard that there was going to be a show and we know some of the people playing and that they were giving out trees and so we came down and everyone was super nice and told us exactly what to do once we planned them so it worked out great. I think it's a, I think it's a great program, especially also the mulch too, that's, I mean, that's amazing. This right here is a bay, leaf, a bay tree, so I'll be using this for cooking. Uh, I'm Filipino so I make a lot of uh, adobo and spice food so I'll be using this to cook with. There should be more trees all over the city. I, I notice it especially when I'm like walking around in neighborhoods, like bus stops. And I mean, there's just there's such an opportunity to make more shade everywhere in the city, it's like along the streets. We'd rather have trees than grass, a lawn. So we're excited to plant more of these kinds of things and waste the water on lawn. We're going to continue to give out trees and teach these young people about you know how to plant them, how to care for them how to develop them. The city council moves to push organic waste disposal measures forward. LA Metro debuts new priority bus lanes and the LA city controller offers great holiday financial tips. These stories up next on City Beat. The LA City Council passed a motion aimed at enacting a California state requirement to reduce the amount of organic waste in our landfills by at least 75% by the year 2025. 
organic waste materials such as paper, cardboard, food scraps and yard trimmings make up about half the items dumped in landfills. That same organic waste emits about 20% of the state's methane gas, a pollutant 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide gas. Council members Mitchell Farrell and Paul Koretz led the charge in council advocating for the motion that passed with a 12 to 0 vote. Starting in 2022, all city jurisdictions are required to provide organic waste collection services and to recycle organic materials. The Bureau of Sanitation has been instructed to report to the City Council within 60 days on necessary steps to comply with CalRecycle regulations. Mayor Eric Garcetti recently attended the LA Department of Transportation's launch of new bus priority lanes in downtown Los Angeles. The new bus priority lanes run northbound on Olive Street between 2nd and Pico and southbound on Grand Avenue between Hope Place and Pico. The installation and use of bus priority lanes will help provide additional safety and mobility benefits to all street users. This latest bus lane project brings the grand total number of dedicated bus lanes throughout the city of Los Angeles to just under 30 miles. This project is on concert with Metro's testing new amenities, such as real-time information displays and sustainable lighting at bus stops along this route. For information on projects that Metro has in the works, visit metro.net. Los Angeles City Controller Ron Galperin recently released Holiday Financial Tips, an online resource to help LA residents manage their spending and avoid scams during the holiday season. Galperin encourages the use of cash or debit cards to help keep you at your set allowance, which helps you to stay within your budget. Consumers should be wary of fake charities, online shopping schemes, fraudulent contests and sweepstakes disguised as innocuous holiday giving. Angelinos should be sure to monitor their accounts often and notify your bank and credit card companies if you plan on traveling this season. For more helpful tips on managing your holiday financials, visit LAController.org. Councilmember Gil Cedillo delighted local kids as the host of the 20th annual MacArthur Park Toy Giveaway. Youngsters in attendance took photos with Santa and Mrs. Claus, hung out with police officers, and picked the perfect toy for themselves at this family event. I want to say Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and all the other related holidays of the time. We are continuing as we have for 20 plus years of sharing toys and gifts with the children of our community. And we're very excited to be here and to do this today. It's so enjoyable being able to bring smiles to people's faces, especially when, you know, during this crazy pandemic where you just need to bring some happiness and normalcy back to the community. You can see it on every smile of every child's face. You can see it on every adult's face. It clearly shows that they, along with the police department, can coexist and come together in unity. Está bonito porque es familiar, ¿verdad? Entonces, tanto como a los niños, a, a nosotros de adultos, nos toman en cuenta. We make sure that we purchase the, the highest quality because we want to make sure that the toys we give them are toys they keep throughout the year and that they like. And so uh, that's very important to me. Thank you, little ones, for being so good this year. It's a joy to be here and celebrate this time with you. That's what Christmas means for me, an opportunity to share what we have with others. And that's God's grace. The residents of Council District 10 were transported to the North Pole at Snow Night in Lamert. Kids young and old munched on yummy treats, drank delicious hot cocoa, and played in the snow. And you could even get a selfie with Santa.
right now we are here in the heart of CD10, right here in Lemur Park. We want to do something special for not only families, but everybody just experiencing just the overwhelmingness of COVID-19. So we're hosting a snow night in Lemur. We have snow sledding, we have free treats, we have free hot cocoa. So we really have a lot of different festivities going on. Again, we really just wanted to give back, do something really nice for the community, and we're here to support. Tonight we partnered with CD10 and the rest of the community to bring uh, snow to the park. I've seen a couple of people cry. I see a couple of grown men cry. They've, never, they've kind of never really seen snow in, 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 in South Central. So um, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's important to have uh, scenes that our children are not used to seeing in South Los Angeles. And bringing the snow to South LA uh, brought something that children can experience and will remember for a lifetime. And this is the first time that we are bringing snow right here in Lemur Park. It's super chilly right now, but we're gonna get through it and we hope everybody enjoys the snow. We live in Southern California for a reason and that's because we don't believe in weather. And so being able to come to a situation where weather is contained and controlled that's the best kind of snow, snow that you can walk away from. This kind of event here is especially important this year, seeing how we've gone through the last few years uh, in a lockdown stage where folks haven't had the opportunity to uh, engage one another. And this is important because it's a family style engagement uh, that brings the community together. It's really exciting to be able to bring my kids to something that's family oriented in South LA. My family didn't do a lot of holiday big celebrations when I was younger, which is why I try to find activities like this for my kids so that they can have a different experience. We andamos viendo dónde pasar un día agradable, una tarde agradable por las festividades. Es la primera vez que venimos, venimos llegando, pero veo que hay mucha diversión para los niños. Primeramente Dios, toda esta situación de COVID se acabe pronto. Tonight, I just want to wish everybody a happy holidays. I know it's been a really rough time with everything coming back from like COVID and the economic impact of COVID. So we really just wanted to have a moment and a night for people to come out and enjoy and just, you know, all the, the, the stresses, all the pressures of life and just have this one night to really just enjoy. Officers from the LAPD Rampart Division got into the holiday spirit by giving back to the residents of Council District 1. This Yuletide event was filled with toys and SoCal pageantry, and even a visit from, you guessed it, Santa himself. Take a look. So here today we're at LAPD Rampart Division. We're hosting our annual food and food giveaway. We're here with our multiple community partners to celebrate the holidays and bring the holidays to the community. So the community is getting toys and food, entertainment, candies. They get a chance to meet Santa Claus. Uh, it gives officers an opportunity to interact with the community and the youth. So it's a way of giving back to the community with all our community partners and bring some smiles during these difficult times, especially during the holiday season. That's what we're here for today. Today we're here to help the LAPD hand out toys and help the community out. I think it's a great opportunity for the kids in the community of LA to all have an opportunity to have an amazing Christmas. I think it's an awesome, an awesome occasion to go ahead and have here at Appreciation. It shows that officers, it puts officers in a different light than normal. Let's them show that they're human beings just like everybody else and that they're here to give and they're here for the community. More than anything, it gives us the opportunity to, to interact with the community and in elements of joy and happy occasions. And they get to know us a little bit better on the different side. The kids are just ecstatic with the toys that they're getting and the opportunity to meet Santa also. Everybody have a Merry Christmas. Always look out for one another and just joy to everyone. On behalf of LAPD Rampart Division, we want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Please be safe. And the gifts just keep on coming. Councilmember John Lee partnered with LAPD Devonshire Pals Division Youth Center for their annual toy giveaway. Residents that participated in the drive through event were also treated to another Santa sighting in Council District 12.
this is my son Jackson, and we're here today at the LAPD Devonshire Palace Youth Center to uh, give our annual toy uh, drive giveaway. A lot of these kids, this might be the uh, only gift that they get all year. Today, in particular, we're trying to put a little smile and cheer in everybody's, uh, all the kids in our community and, and throughout the San Fernando Valley. So this is open to everybody. I think it's a good thing, like for the kids, because um, some like some people can't afford uh, like toys right now, and it'll be fun for like my little sister and me to receive toys. It brings me joy when I think about my family and how we always participated every year in this in this event to help our community. More than 200 kids from six boys and girls clubs were transported to the LA Zoo for a special toy giveaway. Each child was treated to a toy and the opportunity to see the famous LA Zoo lights. Check this out. We're here tonight to give away toys to boys and girls clubs throughout Los Angeles here at the Los Angeles Zoo. There are six boys and girls clubs that are joining us tonight from throughout Los Angeles and we're reaching into communities that may not have access to these toys. We want everyone to have a great holiday season and Jack Pacific has made that possible. It is very important for us to bring all of our members here just because we want them to experience a good happy holiday. I'm here with the Boys and Girls Club to just have fun, have hot cocoa and some churros and go see some Christmas lights. I really want to get a toy for my little sister because she's really all that matters to me. Just something that for her to just have fun with it and to always remember that her sister's always with her. I think getting toys for Christmas is amazing and it's really fun knowing that I might have one. You know, some of these kids haven't been able to go out. They haven't been able to experience that. You know, a year ago, Christmas was spent at home, and now they're getting that experience and being able to have a fun time outside of the club and inside the club. We're really happy to be doing this, especially this year, after the terrible time that we've all been going through. And we want to cheer up the kids and give them something to celebrate. The LA Zoo is always trying to find innovative ways to connect the community to the zoo. And uh, tonight's toy giveaway is just one of the ways that we're doing that. The kids are going to have the opportunity to enjoy Zoo Lights, our annual holiday light show. We light up the zoo with all kinds of fantastic light displays so you can explore the zoo and see giant spiders and a, a twinkle tunnel and all kinds of ways to celebrate the season with light. The zoo is a great place for children to come and spend the day and to learn about conservation and preservation of animals and uh, that's what the LA Zoo is all about. So um, it's great to be back here with Zoo Lights and for this toy giveaway and spending it with the children. In an emergency, the coordination of information and resources is critical. And that is why the Los Angeles Emergency Management Department recently teamed up with the Office of Councilmember John Lee to simulate a large-scale natural disaster. The purpose of the exercise is to help city agencies prepare for an emergency and to help educate Angelinos on being prepared for all kinds of natural disasters. So we're running a simulation in the city of Los Angeles encounters an earthquake of a large scale and it's important for us as a city family to come together and practice and make sure that when this actually happens, which it will someday, that we're prepared and get that information out to the people of the city of Los Angeles. We are practicing an earthquake scenario that we have to respond to during the week of Super Bowl. 
So LA City will be conducting the Super Bowl experience in various parts of the city. And we thought that it would be a great opportunity to exercise mass care and spontaneous sheltering if a major earthquake was to occur during that period. Programs like these are innovative in terms of just like bringing different agencies together to partner in terms of emergencies. Also helping neighbors and community members reach out and find resources and get connected to city resources. Yo creo que este, este ejercicio beneficia no solamente a mí, pero a muchas personas. En lo personal, pues es para mí, para poder ver cómo es el movimiento, qué es lo que se hace en una emergencia. Los consejos que tienen que preparar, no sabemos cuándo vamos a tener un terremoto o algo diferente en una emergencia y es importante estar preparado en su casa, con su familia, tener un plan y saber lo que van a hacer y qué van a necesitar. When thinking about earthquake response, it's important to know that you are supposed to drop cover and hold on. And when seeking shelter, please identify your local recreation center and mobilize your community to be able to respond to an earthquake. You can always check out Readier LA Neighborhood at readyla.org. The LA Public Library invites you to the Climate Cafe and Gardening Club. Check out an exhibit at Self-Help Graphics and Art, or make plans for ringing in the new year virtually. All this up next on Things to Do. The Los Angeles Public Library invites teens and adults to the Climate Cafe and Garden Club. Engage in a gardening project that includes planting of the California native tree, the Blue Palo Verde. Join staff at the Encino Tarzana Branch Library for a discussion on best practices during a drought and what we can do to address water restrictions. It's a Zoom event that celebrates the environment and the community. The Climate Cafe and Garden Club happens Thursday, December 30th, beginning at 5 p.m. To get the Zoom link, send an email request to ecala at lapl.org. Self-Help Graphics and Art, a community art center, proudly invites you to check out The Shell in the Clouds, a culminating exhibition of the works of Pavel Acevedo. In his residency exhibition, Acevedo invites audiences into an environment filled with images exploring migration and adaptation conveyed through mythical Zapotec stories. Acevedo's work explores topics of migration, immigration, borders, and the duality many immigrants contend with after leaving their homeland for a new nation. Be sure to check out The Shell in the Clouds, available now through February 19th. Visit selfhelpgraphics.com slash exhibitions. Log on and hang out with Grand Park New Year's Eve LA 2021 Countdown to 2022, powered by the Music Center in downtown Los Angeles. This online celebration will ring in the new year by honoring the resilience of Los Angeles City and County frontline and essential workers, the folks who gave us hope during 2020. The program will feature joyful musical performances and Grand Park's signature video projection countdown. Musical acts will include performances by the Afro-Dominican rhythms of Songstress Esty and R&B-influenced beats of South LA's Duckworth. Be sure to tune in to the Grand Park New Year's Eve LA 2021 countdown to 2022, beginning at 11 p.m. on December 31st. For more information, visit grandparkla.org. And that's a look at some things to do. That's it for this edition. I'm Maria Hall Brown. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. From all of us here at LA This Week, have a safe and happy holiday. See you next time for more LA This Week.